This is the Barbecue Central Show podcast being generated from a live recording of the Barbecue Central Show, which airs at the BBQ Central Show.com every Tuesday between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices. Visit them at the BBQ Guru.com or call them 800 800- 288-GURU. And by Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply, sauces, rubs, grills, smokers, everything for the outdoor chef. Visit them online at tastylicksbbq.com or call them 800-677-2882. And by Butcher Barbecue, manufacturers of premium injections, rubs, and sauces. Visit them online and take full advantage at butcherbbq.com. And by Stephen DeFranco Jeweler, official jeweler of the Barbecue Central Show. Visit them at stephendefranco.com or call 440-943-2700 and use keyword Barbecue Brother to receive all the discounts. And by Green Mountain Grills, one of the country's premier pellet grill manufacturers. Three different sizes to choose from, something to fit in every budget and find out more by visiting greenmountaingrills.com. And by Cook Shack, the country's premier manufacturer of electronic and pellet-driven cookers, servicing the residential, commercial, and competition markets. Visit cookshack.com for more information. And by El Diablo Mustard. A few years ago, they wanted to turn ordinary mustard into the hottest shit on earth and dared to take spicy mustard further. They took fiery peppers, flaming spices to create flavors so powerful, so intense that even the devil couldn't resist. Find them at eldiablomustard.com and enjoy the bold flavors, great taste, and man, it's hot as hell. And by cookingpellets.com. Have a pellet fire cooker? Why not try some of the best pellets out there on the market today? Guaranteed to run in any cooker, and it's not voiding any warranties. You can purchase yours today at cookinpellets.com. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central show. It's the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. I am your program host, Greg Reppy, happy to have you aboard. By the way, it's the barbecue capital of the North Coast for those who follow along, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, if you want to jump into the show tonight, more than happy to have you. It's a call on your phone, 216-220-0966. You can also uh, email the show if you would care to, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the bbqcentralshow.com, such as signing up for the newsletter in case you didn't get it. Here's what's happening on the show tonight, coming in about 13 minutes from now. Your monthly visit to the barbecue, Dr. Ray Lampy, joining us for the Ask Dr. Barbecue segment. At 9.35, outside of the box, not barbecue related, uh, Scott Volpe will be talking juvenile diabetes, type 1. And a fundraiser that will be happening at that point as well. So be ready with the pocketbook and wallet. And then we'll move on to the second hour. 10.14 finds uh, McD, Michael McDearman, joining us. A lot of steak talk and beef talk, I believe, will be uh, transpiring in that segment. And then to help close out the show, 1035, Stan Hayes from County Line Smokers will be recapping his win at the Sam's Club. Local qualifying event that will see the regional take place in the Midwest City, Oklahoma uh, regional final, I think middle end of September. So quite a quite a bit of distance there. 
Uh, if you are watching the show right now, blast it off. The Facebook, the Twitter, let everybody know that you're watching the show. A couple of different links to share with you. Just the audio can be found at thebbqcentralshow.com. If you like the video stuff, you can find it at the video simulcast partner of the show now for many years, Outdoor Cooking Channel, which is outdoorcookingchannel.com. Also on the Internet Protocol television type devices, for instance, Roku, they have an app store. Go there. Find Outdoor Cooking Channel, download it, and then you also have access at that point to a lot of archives that are available on the Outdoor Cooking Channel app. But you can also access the access the live stream, which you can see the show in live, glorious, high definition between the hours of 9 and 11 each Tuesday, and then uh, whatever Kevin is showing on the Outdoor Cooking Channel in rotation after that. Uh, And don't forget, you can uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes for the audio replays. You can go to my uh, YouTube page for video replays, Outdoor Cooking Channel for video replays. Uh, The main website, I mean, there's really no reason you should ever miss anything on the show ever, period, end of story. There's so many different ways to consume it. It's patently ridiculous. And by the way, joining us once again in the house... Deputy Corey in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Corey, how are you? Hi. You are back in the mix for your second time. I think there are now a few, (laughs) a very few hand-selected beings on this earth that have made it uh, no less than two times into the studio. And I think, if we're being fair, uh, you've been in, so you can see the air quote, (laughs) in the studio uh, more than twice, but like in, in. Two times. That's right. Plenty That's more. Right. I mean, this is like a, this is a, this is fun to do. Yeah, a lot absolutely. of people get uh, uh, intimidated. A lot of people get intimidated. They see microphone. You see camera and a blue light, and it's like, oh my <laughs> god, eight people are going to hear what I have to say. <laughs> would hate that. Well, that's true. Now, would you? Uh, do you classify? I don't know if we got into it the first time, but like, would you classify yourself as like an avid? Uh, like backyard griller type person or like where do you fall into the the live fire stuff not not yet i'm i'm very casual i would i would like to be involved more in uh, live fire cooking but um the kids and baseball and soccer and all that uh what do you what do you got friends like me (laughs) yeah there you go what that's right come over (laughs) give me one second kids gotta go to bed (laughs) all right so, Corey will be sitting in with us the whole show, adding wit, wisdom. A quick update, Corey. Uh, to date, how many perpetrators have we taken down to their ultimate demise? <laughs> I can't count can't that. Answer that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't count them on both hands and both feet. <laughs> That's right. I lost count, Andrew, for 50. All right. Uh, so, long-running debate on the show, Corey, as I'm sure you're a big fan. You get the show on the podcast mostly, right? Yes. Live when you can, podcast mostly. That's correct. So you were you're familiar with this thing called show karma? Yes. A lot of people Absolutely. show up, you know, pit masters, they come on the show on a Tuesday. Um, you know, a lot of the top teams are doing it pretty much every weekend, so they turn right around a couple days later, they're off to the next event. People are always emailing in to me. You uh take you sure take a lot of credit for victories and <laughs> show karma is BS and you can't prove it. All right. When I have uh, the time to prove the Centralites wrong, who am I to deny them the smackdown that they so rightfully deserve? You would recall, (laughs) folks, last week, uh, Rhythm and Q came on the show. We talked about their Sam's Club win from that weekend past, and they turned right out, went to the Smoke on the Water event in Laughlin, Nevada this past weekend, and promptly messed around and got a grand championship. By 13 points, no less. Very nice. In competition barbecue language, that is a smackdown of seismic and gargantuan proportions. Uh, so, you know, who am I to say that the Barbecue Central Show Karma doesn't work? I have a better example than that. How about two weeks Two weeks ago, the team GQ Barbecue was on the show. They messed around in North Platte this past weekend. Grand Championship. So what have we learned? A, you show up on the show, you compete the following weekend, you win. You show up on the show two weeks ago, you compete last weekend, and you win. So I don't... People calling in and emailing me about, hey, show karma, you can't prove it. But the list is way too extensive to prove. I've had 
uh, people as many as a year from showing up on the show reap the rewards of the show karma. So Corey is a investigator by profession. Would you say that I am merely kowtowing to my own interest and in making the karma perhaps more essential than it is, or are you a believer? I'm a believer. It sounds good to me. Of course. <laughs> we we wouldn't want to go against karma. <laughs> Just. We, just think what would have happened if uh, you didn't have technical difficulties and you got Pigman on the show. <laughs> Pigman. <laughs> yeah, end up with uh, who, who I end knows? up with the barbecue lady. <laughs> uh, Alan writing into the show. We love Officer Corey. All right, Alan is in, and that is not a plant, by the way. That's Alan Frankel, longtime Centralite. So you have you're uh, now reaping one fan aside from uh, Becca. <laughs> Who's been on the show? So, if lest anyone think that the Barbecue Central show karma is something that we just like to make up and throw around willy nilly on the show, shame on you. And there are just two most recent examples on how that is. Here's something else. You're not going to be able to see this, uh, but you know my uh, Weber Smoky Mountain cooker that I have in the garage is the very first one, the bullet one. It's the one I keep trying to give you, but nobody will ever take it. You know which one I'm talking about? So there's this, uh, and you would appreciate this the most because you're uh, a super handy guy, uh, so the opposite of me. Uh, there's this hinge that you can put on the back of the main, so there's the lid, and then there's the main cooking chamber, and then there's the third portion. So on the middle portion and then on the top, you can put this hinge, and you secure it to the lid, and then instead of you know taking it off like this, it's like one of these... <laughs> For the audio listeners, they're like, what? what does that look like? It looks like a ghost? Um, I think for as easy of a cooker as the Weber Smoky Mountain is, I mean, if we're adding hinges to the lid that weighs like six pounds, not even six pounds, I mean, can't you just take the freaking lid off? How lazy, Corey, you see the dregs of society on a daily basis. Is this not a commentary on the moral degeneration of our society that we have to have a lid on something that weighs like two pounds? How lazy are we? Oh, yeah. Very lazy. I agree with you. It's, it's ridiculous. Come on. And the sad, well, okay, so jealousy reigns supreme. You know, the guy's selling these uh, hinges for like 50 bucks a piece. <laughs> Hey, lazy fat bastard. Shuck out 50 bucks. My goodness. All right, well, to fix your laziness, we'll have a call in from the doctor this coming segment next with uh, Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampy. Uh, but first, folks, let me welcome newest sponsor to the show, El Diablo Mustard. Yes, that's right. El Diablo, born a few years ago when its creators wanted to turn ordinary mustard into the hottest shit on earth. They push the boundaries with spicy mustard by adding fiery habanero, roasted chipotle, flaming jalapeno, spicy mango, and a mustard so powerful and hot, so intense that the devil couldn't even resist, and El Diablo was born. El Diablo features six bold flavors that taste great and are hot as hell. Mango. Heat meets sweet in this tangy blend of real mango puree mustard with a slow, tingling heat. You can create some real island heat with your next grilled chicken or pork dish. Roasted Chipotle adds kick of the Southwest and the peppery mustard and smoky Chipotle puree for a nice slow heat. Slathered on thick on your burgers, use it as a wet rub for pork. Steakhouse adds a hearty flavor with a zing of Worcestershire and tangy tomato for blazing layers of flavor to juicy slices of sirloin flank steak or hanger steak. Texas chili makes any hot dog an instant chili dog with hints of garlic, cumin, paprika all rolled in the peppery mustard. Jalapeno pops with real jalapeno puree. Mustard zing pepper lovers will love brushing it onto hot bacon or mixing into ranch dressing for an eye-popping sauce. And last but not least, habanero is a flavor inferno for your daring types that want all heat all day long. It's great on bowl of burn ends with any delicious cue you've cooked up. El Diablo mustard are available nationwide at grocers and superstores and at eldiablomustard.com. So grill your burgers, dogs, brats with El Diablo fire, stack your sandwich with meat and El Diablo heat, add El Diablo to chips, pretzels, dips, and you'll have a snack that will scorch your lips. Bold flavors, great taste, hot as hell, and if I may, 
because the timing is perfect, I uh, grilled up a batch of wieners for dinner tonight and used a ketchup on one side and the jalapeno El Diablo mustard on the other side. And i got to tell you, uh, I do. I am a little bit of a chili head, a little bit of a pepper head, and that jalapeno zing right there, you know, better than the run-of-the-mill crap that you find on the shelves in the big stores. El Diablo Mustard, the place to go. And again, uh, easily found at eldiablomustard.com. That's eldiablomustard.com. Check out their uh, clickable logo on the main homepage and also visit their links and sponsors page on the Barbecue Central Show website as well. That's El Diablo. We're back with Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, right after this. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com, the email address. If you want to call in, 216 220. 0966. Deputy Corey in the house tonight. That's right. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show brought to you by the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. 31 cities, half a million in cash prizes to be won, plus eternal bragging lights if you win the whole thing. This week, Sam's Club is rolling into St. Charles, Missouri for a local qualifying event that will see the top six move on to the Midwest City, Oklahoma regional final. That will take place on September 20th. To keep up with the tour or to register to compete, because there are some spaces available, kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. If you got questions about barbecue or grilling, maybe as a hobby or even a business, looking to get an expert's point of view, why not ask Dr. Barbecue? You can submit your questions by clicking on the Ask Dr. Barbecue tab on the website. The doctor is in. Here's Ray Lampy with his nurse, Greg Rempe. Dr. Barbecue. That's right. When the uh, sweet tones are on, you know it's Ask Dr. Barbecue time, and we're joined by our very own Dr. Ray Lampy. Ray, how are you, bud? Good, Greg. How about yourself? Doing absolutely fabulous. We have another nurse in studio tonight, Ray. We have uh, 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 Nurse Corey will be joining us as well. Hi, Corey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, so, Ray, we have you on once a month. We try to answer the woes of barbecue and grilling tales that people have, or perhaps are just looking for some insane and witful insight uh, from both, uh, well, mostly you, sometimes me, maybe even Corey today. You never know. Uh, but before we get into some of those questions, maybe a little bit about uh, what's happening with you since the last time we talked. Um, I am in Denver at the moment. I am filming something for a thing called Craftsy.com. Um, these guys do these classes online. So I'm doing the low and slow backyard barbecue class and it'll be like a two to three hour thing. It'll live on their website. Pretty cool thing. And this is just going to be uh, open to the worldwide public once it's uh, up and running and on their website, you'll be able to dole out a link and so forth. Everybody with 40 bucks will be able to watch Hey, 40 it. bucks. All right. 50% <laughs> to Ray Lampy, I hope. But um, it's, a full, it's a full class. It's a pretty cool idea. I started with like doing crochet in classes and knitting and stuff, craftsy, and now they've ventured into food and they decided it was time to do a barbecue thing and they found me and I'm, I think it's a really cool idea. I can't wait to do it and see what happens with it. How long of a uh, like a, a time commitment? You know, you're of course well versed in the TV side of things and, and all these other videos that you've seen on the internet as well. So from a like a full blown time consumption deal to what we're going to see on the uh, finished product. How much do they whittle out, or is it pretty much a let's hit record and you'll get what you get? No, it'll be whittled way down. It's going to be whittled. We're going to start tomorrow at like 9 o'clock in the morning and probably go till noon the next day. And the way I told them, the only way to do it is we're going to do it real. I'm going to cook some ribs. I'm going to cook some chicken. We're going to prep the butts and briskets. We're going to put them on. We're going to let them cook all night, and in the morning we'll deal with them. Um, so it's going to be like a 30-hour shoot, just like if you were cooking a bunch of barbecue. And they'll whittle it down to a two to three hour thing it'll be some sessions and they'll you know they'll be divided up into pieces but it'll be a total of two to three hours 
You know, someone who really kind of started this whole uh, barbecue class giving type of thing years ago and teaching some of the the greatest pit masters that are out there right now who are in turn teaching their own classes. Uh, Do you think that or are you surprised that given the technology and what is available today that, you know, one of these teams hasn't gone out and, uh, well, I think maybe there's one guy uh, from uh, the injection guy that's not Dave Bosca. um, Cosmos, um, he he put out like a competition. Are you surprised there isn't more, this is what we do and they're for sale on DVD and people that buy them buy them and people that don't don't? Well, I, the guys that are successfully doing it are doing classes on a regular basis. So why do a CD, I guess? And CDs, you know, are kind of out of it. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess the competition thing is so hands-on, though. I really think guys need to see it. This is a backyard thing. This is not a competition thing at all. I mean, you know, let's be honest. I'm not in the loop on the competition thing anymore. I wouldn't be the right guy to do that. But I could te- teach guys at home how to cook real barbecue. So th- this is uh, – yeah – you know, the thing is, you need a platform for it, too, though. You know, you, just because you're selling it on your website doesn't mean it's going to be successful. This is like a whole thing where they do a lot of other classes. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. AskDRBBQ.com is the place to go if you want to submit a question for a future answer. Uh, you can also visit Webb's uh, own website, DRBBQ. Dot com. All right, so let's start with uh, with this one, and this is something that we kind of touch on every so often, but it's it's the great fuel debate of 2014, we'll name it that because it's 2014, uh, lump charcoal, briquette charcoal, now you see coconut charcoal. Is there a place for them all? Um, do you see fad charcoals come in and, and fad charcoals go out? And what about the whole liquid propane type of a situation? Well, liquid propane, we're not going to, you know, I mean, that's a non-issue. In commercial situations, you've got to use it because of just the mass cooking. I understand that. But at home, I wouldn't use gas. It's just there's no taste to it. It's just not as smart. It's not going to be a very good thing. Any of the others are going to taste better. Uh, I'm a lump charcoal guy. I just think there's nothing better. I, I like the way you can control it. I like the way it tastes. It look. I like the way it looks. It looks like charred up wood. Well, that's what I want to cook my barbecue over. Logs is tough because unless you've got the right cooker, it's pretty hard to cook with logs. Uh, briquettes, you know, there's quality briquettes out there. Uh, they're fine, depending on your cooker, if that's what you need to use. I'm, I'm just a lump guy. The coconut thing, that stuff's come and gone a few different generations, I think, and it will continue to. But, I, I you know, barbecue guys, so many of them are gimmick guys. If there's some weird thing, they're going to try it, and de- somebody's going to declare it's the best, and then we'll forget about it in six months, and I'll start cooking with charcoal again. All right, here's the first question coming in. Uh, I have no real name other than the email handle, which was bclar1. And uh, he says, Ray, if I'm cooking multiple flavor profiles and I have to move the meat around due to hot spots, is there a way to tag the meat so I know what is what? (laughs) Um, So things that we conclude, this guy is obviously drinking heavily because he can't keep track of his meat. I'm still trying to (laughs) reprimand him for using the term flavor profile. Right. I'll let that slide. Yes, there's a way. You can, in in Texas, there used to be some hardcore contests and probably still are where they didn't want anybody cheating. So you had to register your brisket, check it in, and they would put those tags that they've gone to back of the trailers uh, in the, the trucking business with a, a serial number on there and you lock it and you have to cut it off. They would cut a little slot in a brisket and you would put that tag on your brisket. Um, that's a little extreme for the backyard, but you could make a little, a uh, little aluminum foil thing and stick it with it. Or you could simply stick a couple toothpicks in one and then you would know it from the other and it wouldn't hurt anything when you flipped it over and moved the toothpicks back over. The other thing I thought of, because, you know, all I wanted to do was rip this guy a new one, but I'm, know, I'm not, I am not going to promote snobbery here on this show. That's not what we're about. And if you're cooking multiple different uh, pieces of meat with different rubs on it, so be it. Why not invest? If, that's your, if this is your thing, invest in, like, little uh, brands like you do with cow, like you brand a cow. Little mini ones, keep them on the grill so they're hot, and they just brand this one spicy, this one sweet, this one sour. I mean, how about that? I don't like that idea because the bark's going to overtake it and it'll get lost. You, who's asking you, Ray? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you. I get the chime I'm in. giving you <laughs> ideas to make millions of dollars. Oh, you my. can have that one for yourself. <laughs> okay, very good. All right. So, uh, any other uh, witty ideas to uh, differentiate the meat? Um, I, 
<laughs> no. No. All right. There you go. Uh, so B. Clar one. Hopefully that helps. Uh, next question is from Clayt in North Carolina. Uh, so probably not a surprise that his name is Clayt. Food contests and uh, are of a growing popularity. You see them on TV quite a bit. There seems to be quite a rise in steak competitions. Uh, how do you see these particular, like in general, steak competitions compared to some of the other food competitions that are out there? Well, I like, I mean, I'm a big fan of all of it. I've always been like that. I've cooked in Magnolia, Arkansas, at the World Championship Steak Cook-Off twice. First time I was there, I came in sixth overall. Wow. Uh, an, an, a very little known fact. Uh, I'm a big fan of all that stuff. I've cooked in chili contests for years. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's great because the barbecue is great. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously I've made a career out of it. I'm a fan. I, I won't, cooked in hundreds of contests, but I like seeing other stuff too. You know, barbecue is such a commitment, uh, to go. My, my old friend, John Beetle, my mentor, one of my mentors used to say, uh, a barbecue contest is three days and a chili contest is three hours. So it's a lot more doable for people. So I, I love seeing it. I, I even like seeing the backyard contest. I wish they weren't, it didn't look just like a real barbecue contest. I don't understand the difference. I like backyard contests. A lot of them used to be just ribs and chicken. And I think that was great because a guy could show up in the morning and reasonably cook ribs and chicken. Um, I, yeah. And the world food championship, we got sandwich and burger and bacon and, and pasta and all kinds of stuff. I love it. I, I, I think it's great. I think it's, it, it really, it makes it make us feel good because barbecue and chili are the, the ones that have been around forever and it should make us feel good that it's emulating. But I guess I should get back on the steak contest thing. I've noticed that there's like some circuits firing up about steak cooking and stuff. Yeah. I, hey, that's great. I, I'm all for it. I'd cook and judge in one any chance I ever had. Uh, Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. If we stay with steak just for a second, uh, do you have a, a particular way that you like to do steaks? Uh, do you have a favorite cut, thickness, and and how do you cook it? Yeah, in my house, it's usually a ribeye, the ones at Sam's Club that are probably an inch and a quarter or so thick. And I, I fire up my egg to about 550 with a solid full load of charcoal, about 550, and serum. Sandy likes hers a little more done and a little more charred, so I usually put hers on first and cook it for a minute or two and then put mine on. And I find that 550 on the egg with the lid open most of the time, uh, about the time that thing's good and charred up, it'll be done medium rare in the middle. So you cook with the egg open uh, for the steaks more more than not? Most of the way. And I'll close it at some point because I know that when I close it, it will get done. You know, if I'm a little, thinking it's still a little bit rare inside, I'll close it and it'll get done quick. I find that if I cook with the lid open or lid closed, I should say, I have to have it so hot so that it, it, it just overcooks. It gets cooked before I get a chance to get it as seared up as I like it. I like it pretty seared. and, and um, So, yeah, that, about 550 works for me with the lid open most of the way. And you're not like one of these people that are subscribing to uh, cooking steak at a lower temperature or doing the reverse sear method or anything like that? Just the more. I mean, your way sounds a little bit more of the standard way to cook steak. Yeah, I mean, my steaks are really good. I don't know why I want to jack around with all that nonsense. Uh, you know, I, I think guys don't get to cook as often. I get to cook every time I want. Uh, like guys don't get to cook often enough, so they kind of want to make it into a science project and want to have more drinking time involved. And I, I don't know. I mean, you know, a good ribeye seared and to medium rare, I, I don't know how you can cook it better than that. I got to be honest, I've never – shrink wrap the steak and let it hang around in warm water and i've never uh you know like smoked it before i seared it i i, I just seems ridiculous to me but you would be open to it if we did it on a weekend one time right uh, no not really no all right good enough uh ray yeah, lampy joins would, us. I would hang with you while you did that to yours and drink and then when you were done, I took more, mine see six you want more and... drinking time just like everybody else right we found that out all right, uh, Kent from uh, Boise, Idaho, uh, asks a question about burgers. Uh, what's your favorite way to make them, and how do you, more importantly, yes, how do you keep them from drying out? I cook burgers a lot at home. I like burgers. Uh, what I do is I go to Publix, and I buy market ground beef. When you're looking at all those different ground beefs in the case, the ground chuck, the ground round, the ground sirloin, uh, most of that stuff comes in in a tube. It is not ground at the store. Uh, and the market ground means the man in the back took the trimmings that he did have and they don't, you know, they don't cut up whole animals like they used to, but they do cut all those steaks at the store. They do cut all the pot roast and stuff at the store and they do have trimmings 
And the market ground, that's their trimmings from the day. And it, it's not always available. It usually is, though. And that's I find that to be really good ground meat. It's probably 80, 20, you know, 8, 20 percent fat. It's, it's got good fat content. I want that. Um, I, that's what I do. I go buy that. I make burgers about about six, seven ounces each. I use a scale because I want them to all be the same size. I make little meatballs and then I flatten them out. Not, I don't pack them real tight. Uh, I try to keep them a little bit loose and then I'll push down in the middle. Like the old John Willingham taught us all this. So you push down with your thumb right in the middle, make a big indent right in the middle and grill them up. And I like, you know, I like my burgers just like they are. If his burgers are dry, he's overcooking them. Just, you know, or your, if your wife makes you buy, 93% lean ground beef, um, you're screwed. Your burgers are going to be dry. You should be buying 80-20 ground beef or that market ground beef has always got plenty of fat in it. And just don't overcook them. You don't have to cook burgers to death. You don't have to grind your own meat. Um, I don't do any of that. Uh, Bill in Pittsburgh, so we'll forgive him for being in Pittsburgh. Uh, growing popularity. Schittsburg. We call it Schittsburg in hockey season. Yeah, we call it Pitts Puke here in Cleveland. Pitts puke. There's a stupid joke that goes along with Pittsburgh that I won't bore you with, but maybe in a different segment. Uh, growing popularity of pellet cookers. I see a lot to choose from, a lot more even than there was five years ago. Um, recommendations f- on the number of manufacturers now and any reason to not get a pellet cooker. Uh, well, I've, I mean, I've, there's no secret. I got a Fast Eddie FE100 in my trailer. I've had it for years. Eddie's my buddy. Um when I have a lot of food to cook, I use it. I, you know, I work for Big Green Egg. I don't test out all the new pellet cookers. I honestly don't know. Um, I, I see a lot of them. The ones I've used over the years, I like. They cook pretty good. I, they're, they're, in my opinion, they're pretty one-dimensional. The ones I've used over the years, they really can't sear a steak. Now, I know some of these new ones can, but I just honestly don't know much about them. I haven't used them. Um, what I will say is Fast Eddie's been making, selling and pellet cookers longer than everybody else on the market except Traeger, I think. And uh, Eddie, Eddie used to just re- rebuild the Traegers, uh, but along the way he made his own patented pellet system. It's, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody who knows more about how pellet cooking works than Eddie. Um, and he's got a whole line of grills. I, I'd sure probably start there. Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, joining us here on the show. If you have a question that you would like us to uh, give our opinions on or give you an answer for an upcoming show, askdrbbq.com is the place to go. You can also check Ray out his own website, drbbq.com. We're doing the monthly Ask Dr. Barbecue segment. Um, Ray, as far as um, we're going to steer it into a couple Facebook questions here, um, KCBS, uh, the direction that you're seeing it go in, and b- I guess before I get your answer, let me say that I can't remember – in the last two or three years that at this point, maybe even over the last 18 months, that there really hasn't been a lot of KCBS scuttlebutt, whether it be from the loudmouth small percentage people on the Internet uh, or whether I'm getting messages from people that are on the tour or whatever the case may be. But this is as quiet as I've heard anybody be about what's happening with the KCBS in recent memory. Do you find it to be the same? Yeah, it's definitely quiet. There's not a lot of uh, lot going on, and maybe it's because I don't have time to keep up with them. Because uh, I've certainly, you know, called them out on some things in the past, and I'll never apologize for it. But I, you know, I'm a fan. I, I'm I'm KCBS member number 943. You know, I, I've been I've been around forever. I'm a, I, we none of us would be doing what we're doing if it wasn't for KCBS. You know, maybe something else would have come along, but it didn't have to. KCBS was there. Um, it's grown consider you know consistently for 30 years um you know you, how can you not be a fan i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say i love everything they do but how can you not be a fan it's 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 been the the solid base for the barbecue growth for years um now I, honestly i don't really know what's going on uh, i don't pay much attention when i do it seems like anything that might have some meat to it is in executive session um so I don't really know what direction it's going. I know that every year there's more contests. I know the prize money. We dreamed of prize money like this back in the day. You know, we 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 had this hope that it would become like this. Um, you know, there's there's millions of dollars in prize money. There's contests by everybody's house. Uh, 
I don't even in Idaho, there's a bunch of contests. I mean, you know, it's it used to be we had to drive everywhere and there was no prize money. It's grown and grown and grown. Are they, are they perfect? No. They, they screw some stuff up. Yeah. Do I wish it would be better? Sometimes, yes. But at the end of the day, man, it, you know, it, it's it's hard to knock it too much. Uh, aside from this video shoot that you're going to be doing tomorrow, uh, what else you got on tap here before we let you go? I'm going to Memphis in May. Big Green Egg is a sponsor of the VIP area. I will be right smack in the middle there cooking on the eggs with my trailer. Come over, say hi, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, Chris Capel's joining me, so me and Chris will be hanging out and uh, just cooking in this little cage right in the middle of Memphis in May for three days. Should be fun. And from there, I go right to Red Fest. Jeff Foxworthy's music and comedy fest or something in Austin. Uh, Big Green Egg sponsoring that as well. Come home for a couple of days. Go to Grill Stock in yeah. England, of yep. course, where yep. it's much fun. Um, oh, gosh. It just goes on and on. And I got to go to New York. I got to go to California. It's going to be a big year, man. A lot of good stuff going on. Big year. And as always, joining us once a month for the Ask a Dr. Barbecue segment. Ray, as always, appreciate the time. And we will look for you again, believe it or not, in June. Thanks, Greg. Good talking to you, man. You I will be watching the Blackhawks in seconds. All Blackhawks. right. Good luck with that. See you, man. He, uh, he just referenced some sport. I think it's hockey. Got to watch the Blackhawks, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! You like hockey, Corey? <laughs> yeah. What the, the hell? playoffs are exciting. What did I... Oh, man. Something's going on with my background. Where'd it go? Hold on a second. It's got to be here somewhere. No, it's gone. It's all gone. All right, we'll have to figure out what... I hope that... Okay, well, I'm still there. On the main, I'm still there on the main one, and that's all that counts. All right, that was uh, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue. You can find him again at drbbq.com. If you have a question, ask drbbq.com. Uh, Corey, believe it or not, there is a running banter right now in the chat room about have you ever injected a steak? Like, you know how I inject the pork butts and the briskets and stuff when I cook? Right, yeah. right. It, it, it's degraded into steak. Wow. People will inject anything. if you. I mean, you know, we're men, right? We'll inject anything. No matter what. No matter what. Hey, uh, do you use a pellet cooker? I know I do. I got two in the backyard. Green Mountain Grill, a Gorilla pellet cooker as well. Um, let me talk to you about the newest newest other sponsor of the show it's called cooking pellets that's right you can find them at cookingpellets.com you know they were using a pellet grill about four to six days a week and they're very serious about offering you something that they found missing in this industry which is the barbecue industry which is more specifically the pellet fuel portion of the industry this is a 100 percent pe- uh, premium product at a Fair price. How about that? Cookingpellets.com was started because they got aggravated at the minimal flavor that was produced by most of the pellets that were out there on the market. So they found the best materials to make a premium pellet and started manufacturing about eight years ago. They now have over 40 dealers. They now have five distributors throughout the U.S. and America's hat, as we better know as Canada. Plus, online service through... Their internet website, cookingpellets.com, or via a little place, maybe you've heard of it, amazon.com. No, who are they? If you go to amazon.com, go ahead and uh, toss in cooking pellets, and you will be well on your way to trying out some of the uh, best pellets out there on the market. And again, uh, substitute minimal flavor for maximum flavor with these pellets. I'm very excited. Going to get my hands on my first trial bag myself. You can bet I'll be pressing them into service and giving a full review. So stand by for that. But first, if you have a pellet fire cooker, jump on over to cookingpellets.com or test them out on amazon.com. Maybe you got Amazon Prime. You could have them as little as two days because it's like uh, free two-day shipping when you have Amazon Prime. It's the best deal going. All right, uh, we're coming back with Scott Volpe with some uh, diabetes talk, believe it or not. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 
877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we are back just like that. My uh, background on the other side is what? Okay, whatever. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, thanks again to Ray Lampy. Uh, Mo Kason writing in. Big Mo, judge on Barbecue Pitmasters. Tell my bud Ray. I look forward to seeing him down there at Memphis in May cooking the whole hog, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Mo Kason is listening to the show tonight, Corey. That's very exciting, don't you think? Yes. Damn right it is. <laughs> he's, he's a big guy now. All right. Uh, look, we're going to change it up a little bit in this segment. It's not always about barbecue here on the show. And some of you might recall that about two years ago I had my cousin Scott Volpe on this show. We talked about type 1. Juvenile diabetes um, kind of turned into a, like a mini fundraiser. We actually raised over $1,000 that night to dump into the walk that they were doing later that weekend. Uh, let's do it again tonight, gang. Joining me on the hotline tonight, my cousin all-around good guy and avid uh, backyard griller, Scott Volpe, joining me here on the show. Uh, Scott, how are you, buddy? I'm doing excellent, Greg. How are you doing? Uh, doing absolutely fabulous. appreciate you asking, Scott. Um, don't, so let me... don't forget, I am also a Corey fan. Big fan of Corey. <laughs> Big fan of Corey, really? <laughs> yeah, he looks like he knows something, but he doesn't want to tell you, which I find immensely entertaining. Oh, he knows something, all right. <laughs> Believe me, the joke's on us when I say that. Um, all right, Scott, so let me uh, figure out where the hell my – this background thing is really pissing me off. I'm going to have to take somebody to task on this. So let's kick it off right now. Barbecue Central show for everybody listening right now, and I'm not even kidding when I say this. To jump it off the cliff, as it were, I'm dropping 250 bucks in the kitty tonight to get this thing up and running. And I want to challenge anyone to match it or beat it. And I also ask that during the segment and remainder of the show, you consider donating something as well. And I have a secure PayPal set up. Uh, this is where it's at. Greg at the BBQ Central So it's my email. So if you have a PayPal address, put that in there. Send me a donation. Any size is welcome. But if you can match or beat my donation of 250 bucks, I'll ship you out some cool barbecue prizes from the vault as well. So we're off and running in that regard. For the people, Scott, that maybe don't know the difference uh, between type 1 and type 2, because obviously type 2 gets a lot of run, um, can, sure. you, can you kind of briefly explain what the difference is? Yeah, and you know, type two should get a lot of run as well. It's becoming a, uh, if it well, it already is really a pandemic. But uh, the main difference, Greg, is that uh, a type one diabetes typically uh, shows up in childhood, and it's a it's a factor of your body just stopping to produce insulin. So, uh, whereas a type two person's body would make insulin, the pancreas would secrete it. They just have a hard time. Uh, processing it so they face what's called insulin resistance and as the insulin resistance gets worse their blood sugar would rise to the point where they become diabetic and have to do thing, do some things to manage it now the benefit and, and I'm, I'm not making I'm not making it sound I'm making it sound easier than it is but with type 2 would be that you could do some diet and exercise type things to help reduce the blood sugar spikes and, and, and drop those things over time now with type 1 the difference would be that you don't make any insulin, so you're completely dependent on exogenous ins- insulin or, you know, basically the needle. Um, so you have a daily regimen of, of some long-acting insulin, and you'll mix that in with mealtime insulin to cover the carbohydrates that you're going to make. Um, but because you're totally dependent on that insulin, it induces a lot of variability in your blood sugars. Scott Volpe joining me here on the show. Uh, a website to check out while we're talking and uh, possibly make some donations as well as uh, jrdf.org. That's uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, jrdf.org. That's going to be the walk that you guys are uh, going to be taking part in here in a couple weeks as well. Uh, and, of course, we're talking about your son, Ben. You know, we have kids roughly the same age, Scott, the uh, same number of kids, actually, except you make boys. I make girls. Um, I make boys. But, what's that? I said, I make boys. I know, you make boys, I make girls. Um, yeah, and it's good. It's all good. There you go. Uh, ben was, I believe, six when he was originally diagnosed with uh, type 1. Uh, how was Ben presenting to you and Eric that, that gave you cause for concern? Did you see anything or at least lead you to think that something maybe wasn't 100% you needed to get him to a doctor to kind of check that out? Yeah, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say a lot to anybody that'll listen, quite frankly, that we really are blessed because we didn't have the typical presentation that a child with type 1 would uh, would have. With Ben, it was really 
uh, a matter of his eyesight. He was having disturbances in his vision, um, said he was seeing spots. So uh, my wife took him to the pediatrician, and thankfully, mercifully, uh, we had a pediatrician who was very thorough, looked at his eyes, everything seemed fine, but then just said, hey, let me check one thing, and it's, it's probably nothing, but he took a uh, what's called a random blood sugar, which would be basically take a blood sugar at any time of the day, uh, and if you're not within a couple hours of eating, you should be back down under 100. And he was up over 220, and uh, we really found it by happenstance. Um, he wasn't uh, your typical kid in that he didn't uh, get very sick. Uh, most of the time, kids would present with flu-like symptoms where they're uh, nauseous and vomiting, rapid breathing. Um, they'd be what's called diabetic ketoacidosis, where their body is burning cells and kicking off toxins because um, it cannot process the sugar that's in the bloodstream. Uh, uh, or, excuse me, it can't, doesn't have the insulin to take the blood sugar out of the bloodstream and get it into the cells. In essence, what you're doing is you're starving the body and burning what material you have. Uh, those kids end up in the emergency rooms. Uh, they have blood sugars 6, 7, 8, 900. Um, and we'll spend weeks. Like, I mean, they could spend a week, they could spend 10 days in ICU, uh, and they'll come out completely insulin dependent. Um, and we, thankfully, we did not have that experience. But uh, many of the children that we've met subsequently since Ben was diagnosed have, and, uh, and uh, that is not a fun scene for anybody, as you could imagine. You know, I'm sure you remember like it was just five minutes ago, but when, you know, you were sat down with the doctor and he kind of gave you the diagnosis, you know, what are some of those initial thoughts that run through your head when you're getting that news? Yeah, that's a great question. I, uh, you know, I, professionally, I'm in pharmaceuticals and I talk about diabetes all the time and uh, I, we were crushed, my wife and I. Um, I think we went through, you know, ultimately went through the phases of mourning um, in a lot of ways because you sort of saw the immediacy of how it was going to impact your son's life, um, you know, you, you immediately go to all the worst places that he's not going to be able to play sports. He's not that sports are the end be all, but he's not going to be able to do all the things that normal kids do and that he's somehow going to be handicapped or different from other kids. And uh, aside, aside from the, the general health concern that you have at that moment, uh, but that was, uh, I mean, was and still is and hopefully will be the hardest day of my life. Um, and it's just, uh, it's something that took a lot of time to get past. But I will say that uh, subsequently, you know, we realize how lucky we are. And, uh, and, and you also realize that, uh, you know, the type 1 diabetes does not stop uh, kids like Ben uh, from being kids like, you know, anybody else's kids, like your kids. So it's uh, um, tough at first, but you learn, you grasp, and then, uh, and then ultimately you succeed. You know, day to day, um, like what's the routine for you three getting ready to, to face the day and perhaps uh, just as importantly, getting through the day? Yeah, so, uh, you, know, you know, you wake up. First of all, first thing you do in the morning is check your blood sugar, find out where you're at. You made it through the night, but that's uh, it's actually not hopefully because you play a big role in that as well. But uh, uh, check blood sugar, see where you're at. If you're in range, then that's great. You eat breakfast. Uh, but before you eat, you got to figure out how many carbohydrates are in that uh, meal, and you got to count for those. Now, Ben wears an insulin pump, so that's one other thing you got to do is make sure that uh, the infusion site, which is basically a needle attached to a tube, uh, attached to a pump, um, is in properly and all loaded and ready to go, that there's enough insulin to carry them to the day. Um, you then have to you know, tell the pump how many carbs you're going to get, cover that meal, and then you know, for Ben, it's on to school where he goes right to the nurse, he meets with the nurse, shares his information from the morning, they make sure he's going to be okay, he goes to gym class, he's got to check his blood sugar. He's got, uh, uh, if he gets through that and he's not low, um, that's a good thing. Then he's got to check his blood sugar before lunch, check it again in the afternoon, check it again before he goes on the bus because wow. you can't have him on the school bus if he's going to be in a situation where he could be going low. Um, that's a very dangerous situation. Uh, and then you get home, and it's you're gonna go play outside. You gotta check your blood sugar. You feel low. Check your blood sugar, uh, et cetera. Through dinner, through nighttime, probably three, four more checks. One before bed, and then uh, either myself or my wife will get up uh, a couple times a night, usually around midnight, and again, uh, two, three, maybe four, depending upon what his numbers are, in the middle of the night to check him to make sure that he's not. First of all, make sure that he's alive. Uh, second of all, make sure that he's not low or dangerously high and, you know, make corrections that way. 
I mean, for just a long answer. Just, but it's a long uh, day. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, it just seems that aside from all the other crap that you're dealing with on a regular basis, uh, I mean, that really adds a lot of. Uh, I mean, it's labor intensive. You're, I'm sure, happy to do it because he's your freaking kid. Uh, but, you know, back all that out of it, um, that's a lot of extra stuff to do every day. Yeah, it's a man. I mean, you, you know, it's a management thing. Um, so you got to stay on top of it. Uh, at the end of the day, Greg, it's, it's never very far outside your mind. So to your point, while you're doing everything else you got to do, you know, you look at your clock and you wonder, all right, Ben's at school right now. I wonder what his blood sugar is. I wonder what he was before lunch. And, you know, there's not a day that doesn't go by that my wife isn't on the phone with a nurse at school. They communicate all of the time. So it's, uh, it truly does take a team. Uh, I couldn't do it without Aaron. Uh, Aaron could probably handle it without me because she's a rock star. But, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, we couldn't do it without the school, et cetera, et cetera. And it really does. It takes a, I mean, it takes a, a ton of people to handle this. It's a big deal. And not to even mention the fact that, you know, Ben is now a 10-year-old kid who's got to own all this stuff, and uh, that's pretty heavy for a 10-year-old kid. Yeah, uh, jrdf.org, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, if you want to uh, check out some information on that. We're talking with Scott Volpe, uh, who is my cousin, by the way. Um, you kind of dovetailed nicely into it. You know, last time we talked, Ben was eight. You fast-forward now, 10-year-old kid. Uh, for him, you know, how often does he talk about it? Does he talk about it? Is it something that is... It's on his mind as much as it's on yours and Aaron's. And what kind of a mindset is it for him, you know, now four years uh, post-diagnosis? Yeah, sure. Not to, cor- not to correct you, Greg, but it is the JDRF uh, rather than the JRDF. Oh, sorry. But, uh, yep. Sorry. That's my bad. That's all right. JDRF.org. Um, no, no worries. Uh, so, you know, he, he talks about it every day, um, but... To his credit, you know, it's not in the sense that, oh, shucks, woe is me, I have type 1 diabetes. You know, it's sort of more along the lines of like, hey, I need my pump change. Hey, I got to check my sugar or, hey, I feel low, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I, I would say we had this conversation two years ago, and two years ago it was a little bit different. It was probably something that he was still working through, and it, it was holding him back a little bit. He, you know, had that interfere um, sort of going on on his own, but... At this point, you know, he knows there's enough people to look out for him. He knows um, what it takes to sort of manage some of these things. And he, you know, he's a really quite resilient little fella. Um, and he doesn't let it handle it. It doesn't let it stop him anymore. So he plays travel soccer. He runs 5Ks, 10Ks, any any race we can sign him up for. Um, you know, we just have to plan accordingly. And uh, every once in a while, he gets bummed, you know, like a kid would. But uh, I would say the majority of the time, I'm the one that's bummed about it more than he is. He, uh, he's, he's a kid, and his friends have uh, really, you know, they treat him like a kid just as well. And they want to see what he's doing half the time when he's poking his finger. And I think it's gross that he's, you know, got blood all over the place. Uh, just in a few short minutes, we're up to $325 here from the Central Lights, so we appreciate that, no doubt about it. Uh, Scott, obviously, well, you know, people want to help out. Um, what's the like the best way people can go about regarding, you know, specific fundraising efforts aside from, you know, kind of what we're trying to do just kind of off the cuff tonight? Yeah, um, you know, I guess it would depend on your goal. You know, um, for me and my family, you know, based on Ben's specific situation, uh, having type 1 diabetes, the JDRF is, is our um, our flagship uh, charity and and the reality the reason for that is they are the ones that are really championing championing and funding um, some of the the uh, the closest tech the closest advances in finding a cure. Uh, there's a technological um, cure I think that'll be it's I use cure it's not the right word but a technological uh, solution to this physiological problem um, that hopefully will be out in the next maybe five years maybe earlier it's called the artificial pancreas and without the JDRF and people like 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 us that are banging that drum, um, that thing doesn't come to marketplace. So, um, you know, the best thing to do is, uh, well, the best thing for me to ask you to do is get involved, go to the website, see what kind of walks are going on in your area, you know, either donate to a local person like myself that's going through it uh, or our family. Um, you know, certainly helping us is much, much appreciated. But uh, even something as little as, you know, like, seeing that little sneaker at the grocery store, if they ask you if they want to contribute and help somebody out, or even the American Diabetes Association does a lot with it. 
Uh, every little dollar counts. Um, you buy a sneaker, hang it in your window. Uh, someone sees a sneaker, they think about it, and it just sort of triggers that uh, trickle-down effect, a little pay it forward. So um, I would just say that no effort is too small, um, and everybody has a chance to help, and the people that you're helping uh, appreciate it more than you think they do. So we appreciate it. Uh, Scott, really appreciate you, man, coming on tonight and talking about Ben, uh, the type 1 diabetes. Uh, and I know it's not easy, obviously, but I think people in similar situations, and obviously there's actually some people here in the chat room that have been affected by uh, type 1, uh, some in, in really bad instances. Others, you know, have uh, been diagnosed early on, uh, like Ben, and now they're 45 and 50, uh, living, uh, you know, uh, normal lives as well. So I always appreciate the fact that, you, you know, you'll come on and talk about this, and, and, and obviously you know that you're not alone, and uh, certainly appreciate you coming on. Hey, Greg, listen, thanks so much for giving us the time and, and uh, this venue. And thanks again to uh, the amazing fans that you have. And uh, uh, it's so generous and it's truly appreciated. Uh, and I would just add one more thing that, you know, I've had quite a time where I've had enough to drink, but at no time have I ever felt the need to tag my meat. So I feel like I'm ahead <laughs> of the game in that scenario. There he is, Scott Volpe, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, buddy. I am. All right, there he is, my cousin. Scott Volpe. I, I figured out what was wrong with my background, too, Corey, by the way. I know you were uh, concerned. Right. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, can you, I mean, Corey, you're a parent. You got, uh, we got kids obviously the same age as well. Um, I mean, can you imagine having to go through, uh, you know, all of that extra daily stuff uh, just to make sure that, you know, nothing seriously tragic happens? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the day is busy enough. I, can't imagine. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, obviously we're asking for your help tonight. Uh, they're actually looking to raise $5,000 uh, for the goal uh, when they get up to walk uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you guys always ask what you can do to help the show. Uh, I'm going to say this is it. Donate something here, and we'll call it even. Uh, again, the PayPal address is secure. It's greg at the BBQ centralshow.com again that's the paypal address and uh, i will go ahead and forward all the uh, collections over to scott once we get it we'll give it uh, you know a balance of the week here i'll make some social media posts as well so whatever you can give obviously i appreciate it and i know scott appreciates uh, but just for a point of um, getting up there if you can match my donation of 250 bucks or beat it i'll give you some extra swag out of the barbecue central vault as well so uh, thanks again to scott and again that website that he was talking about that i said incorrectly twice jdrf.org jdrf.org juvenile diabetes research foundation all right thanks to my cousin scott and let me talk to you quickly before the uh, top of the hour takes off three-day sale folks for cook shack that's right cookshack.com is the website um cook shack is celebrating national barbecue month how are you celebrating for three days only, March 6th, 7th, and 8th, they will give you a free spice kit and seafood grill when you purchase one of their residential electric smokers or pellet grills. That is a savings of up to $109. The spice kit comes with brisket rub, rib rub, spicy chicken rub, chili mix, and spicy barbecue sauce. The seafood grill is stainless steel and is perfect for smoking small or delicate items like fish, shellfish, nuts, and vegetables. The smokette. The SM009-2, the Smokehead Elite, the SM025, and the Super Smoke Elite, the SM045. And the AmeriQ are the electric smokers that make it easy to add real wood smoke to your foods. The PG1000 and PG500 pellet grills feature four-zone cooking and pellet broil technology. All their products come with a no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee. To order online, just use the promo code SPICY. S-P-I-C-Y, when you check out at CookShack.com or call CookShack directly, 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. And tell their friendly sales staff you want the spicy deal because that's a promo code. With a CookShack smoker or pellet grill, you can celebrate barbecue every day. It just doesn't have to be you know National Barbecue Month. It's every day. Hurry because this deal ends Thursday May 8th. That's only like in two days. Also happens to be my daughter's birthday, May 8th. So there you go. Bobby, you're not getting a cook shack because you haven't been very good this year. Uh, I, um, so again, again, that's a promo code SPICY, and the deal runs until May 8th. Check it out. Hook up. Now is the time. We talked about pellet cookers. 
with Ray Lampy uh, two segments ago. You always been looking to pull the trigger? Pull it now. Nothing but good things with Cook Shack. All right, uh, we're coming right back to wrap the first hour. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we're back. Uh, Deputy Corey in the house. Hello. Hey, yo. Uh... Well, I'm not kidding when I say this, Corey, by the way. Uh, Connie Rampy writing, and that would be my mom. Greg, this is your mother. Corey is in the line of fire. He doesn't have time to light a fire. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> I like it. Oh, I see. I'm asking you, did I ask you how to light a fire or something like that? I, I don't want to be, we, you know. I don't you wanna... asked me if how involved I was and. Uh... Live cooking or outdoor cooking. Right, right. You're in the line of fire. You don't have time. <laughs> you just come over to my house at the end of the shift, so I'll make you ribs. And... Corey, were you a fan of ribs before you met me? No. Damn right. Fan now? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to uh, reset for the second hour. Lots to come. We're going to uh, refill our libations here, and uh, we might uh, banter a little bit about the Dr. Barbecue appearance also. Uh, for the remainder of the show, if you can see your way clear to donate to the uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, uh, do it through my website. We'll make a Barbecue Central deposit in for uh, the walk that's coming up in a couple weeks. Again, that PayPal site is greg at the bbqcentralshow.com and uh, I'll call you out here as you donate. Uh, you are listening to and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. We'll be right back for Top of the Hour. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? We ate 50 for wiener. But listen, Lavernius, shake a face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Ooh. Top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Oh, yeah, you have found the Barbecue Central Show. Whether on purpose or by mistake, it's too late. You've been sucked in with the tractor beat. <laughs> Barbecue knowledge being disseminated across the globe. Uh, we broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It's the barbecue capital of the North Coast. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Those are the uh, two ways to get in touch with me, should you see fit. What did I do with the uh, that damn music? Oh, yeah. I was uh, telling somebody how I do. Uh, do you recall El Smokebo, Corey? Mm, no. No. Does this, does this song mean anything to you right now? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is El Smokebo. Broadcasting over the EIB network, the excellence in barbecue. Spreading knowledge across the advanced barbecue studies, conservatism, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever. It's that uh, Rush Limbaugh fellow. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, 
buy my overpriced stuff that I sell on my website. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. Come, still to come tonight on the show, Michael McDearman. We're going to be talking a lot of steak with him. Uh, also, helping me close out the show, County Line Smokers Pitmaster, Stan Hayes will be joining us. He's also the president and CEO of Operation Barbecue, so we'll probably touch on that as well. Coming up on the show next week, in case you are wondering, the second Tuesday of every month brings none other than the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website on the face of the earth, Meathead Golden, will be joining us. Love uh, bantering back and forth with Meathead. Also, look for Harry Sue from Slap Yo Daddy. Harry, a a uh, well-respected and revered competitor on the barbecue circuit. And he did a little crazy thing. Corey, you are a man of investigatory skills. (laughs) I can never say that word. It always sounds so much better in my head. Um, Do you know what Harry Sue did? I'll give... Guess what he did. No. He stopped being a competitor for one weekend. Went ahead, turned around, and judged. Are you kidding me? Now, personally, I think that if you're a competitive barbecue cook, especially in some sanctioning bodies, like, for instance, uh, the IBCA is... um, um, like crowd favorite, so like we could go to an IBCA event and we could just say, "Hey, we want to judge," and they stick us in the tent and you know they give us some criteria and then we're off and running. But it's pretty much what tastes good to us in a, in a very dumbed down sense. Uh, some of the other sanctioning bodies, you got to take a class and they bring in a competition cook and they overcook it on purpose to tell you what it or you know how it tastes and what the texture is and then they cook it right and that's. A, so, you know, then you're a certified barbecue judge. But nevertheless, you're held to those criteria. So it would seem to me that if you are in a situation uh, of that ilk, right, uh, why wouldn't you be a certified barbecue judge? And when you're not cooking contests, judge. See what's winning. Put your ears open and see what these judges are saying. Well, that tastes like poop. I don't like the fact that that, orange look, uh, that chicken has orange in it. I don't like the lettuce in that box. You know, weird <laughs> shit like that. I mean, that's probably not a bad idea, right? I like it. Going uh, deep cover. I. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Deep, super deep, like a <laughs> sniper cover. <laughs> that's right. With like all the, the grass, the high grass over you, and you're sitting there with your gun. and I love that shit. Uh, all right. Uh, currently on the roll of giving tonight... Don Geiger, Southern Crunk LLC, and Kent Wheelis all in with donations. Thank you, gentlemen. Southern Crunk, I assume you're a gentleman, so I apologize if you're a female, but uh, it just says Southern Crunk. Um, John Dawson writing in, uh, diabetes, and just for that, I'm out. Oh. I hear enough about doom and gloom on talk radio each week. Look forward to BCR and being a cool place to come and hear what I can't hear anywhere else. I don't think anybody's talking about diabetes on the radio, John. You're banned from the show. You mean doom and gloom like this? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the state of the country is in a shambles. Uh, the president is a kook. He's taking us to hell in a handbasket. Obamacare, it's crazy. He's crazy too. I'm crazy. I want a cheeseburger. I need Oxycontin. <laughs> I hear you, John. That's doom and gloom, all right. I believe it. All right. Um, the 2014 Sam's Club series rolled into Overland Park, Kansas this past weekend. This was a local event qualifier, seeing the top six teams move on to the Midwest City, Oklahoma regional final, which will take place September 20th. And the top six teams moving on to that very event. Well, the winner, who we'll be talking to in about 30 minutes from now, County Line Smokers. That's right. Uh, Runner-up, or as we say in the competition biz, RGC for Reserve Grand Champion. Getting Basted. Number three, Dirt Road Barbecue. Number five, Squeal Like a Pig Barbecue. And number six, Hunka Hunka Burning Rub. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I'm a hunk of hunk of burning rub. 
All right. Uh, the next Sam's event this coming weekend, uh, which is a, a local qualifier in St. Charles, Missouri. So good luck to all of those competing. All right, Corey, I leave it in your hands. Do you want the top 35 rib joints in the country, or do you want Columbus man, I'm sorry, Columbus, Georgia man sets new world record for barbecue marathon? Let's hear about the marathon. All right, let's hear about the marathon. Let me quickly click on this link. Columbus man sets new world barbecue marathon record. Jan Grief of Jan. Uh All right, man. (laughs) Jan Grief, man. Of Columbus set a new world record Sunday for the longest barbecue marathon by an individual. And during the 80 hours he was grilling, his two-year-old daughter, Abigail, kept asking for her mother the same question. Is daddy still cooking supper? <laughs> yes. Yes, honey. And <laughs> it takes a long time to cook that brisket. Ask Bo Diddley on uh, that uh, uh, Arby's commercial. Big mister, you cook your brisket for 16 hours. That's my uh, big mistress impersonation. She's going to kick my ass. <laughs> Cooking under a tent on Broadway median, grief shattered the previous record of 62 hours and six minutes. He did. Smiling grief finished at 3 p.m. On hand to verify that everything was done properly. At the Grillathon was Philip Robertson, an adjunctor for Guinness World Records, who presented grief with a certificate making the record official. It was amazing, Robertson said. He was like a machine. I don't think he burned himself a single time. Wow. Robertson said that over the 80 hours, Grief cooked 1,000 hot dogs, 200 pieces of corn, 104 pieces of chicken, 558 hamburgers, and 526 pieces of... I don't know what the hell this word is. Boar... Boarwurst? Is that a sausage? Let's say sausage. Okay, I'm sorry. It is a type of sausage popular in South Africa. If I just continue reading, I wouldn't sound like such an idiot. Grief, who's 29, married father of two, is a native of South Africa. And at 18, he attended the Columbus State University on a tennis scholarship and recently became a U.S. citizen and works for Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Georgia. So 80 hours get you a world record. Corey, I have an idea. We're shooting for 80 hours and one minute to put it right in that guy's face. (laughs) Eat it. I bet I got more cookers than that guy has, too. And we don't have to go out on the main street anywhere. We can just kick it in my backyard. There you go. Amongst the dirt. So I got a lot of dirt in the backyard. (laughs) No lie about that. All right, hold on one sec. Uh, All right. I'm not going to get into a back and forth with an emailer. I can tell you that. I'm not going to do it right now. If you want to donate again, uh, we're <laughs> damn cat here. Uh, you can uh, do it at the PayPal address, Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Um, next time on, we'll probably hit the thirty five top rib joints. But I'll have you know this: that I believe that the top three of five are all in Kansas City. So perhaps someday when we get free we should be making a road trip to kansas city and we'll put together a real list and uh, i did peruse the list and i have found that it is a swath of the country it's not just really designated kansas city gets a good chunk uh, for sure of their best rib joints of 35 but uh you you've uh, heard of montgomery inn down in cincinnati yes that was on the list believe it or not and high ranking i believe was like towards top 10 or something like that but I did see a lot of pictures with a lot of sauce on ribs. I mean, we're not trying to hide anything here. Let's play by the rules. If it's the top 35 rib joints in the country, let's make sure we're not talking about the top 35 uh, sauce joints with ribs in them. <laughs> Don't cheat. You're only cheating yourself. All right, uh, Michael McDearman coming up out of the break. Let me talk to you uh, quickly about the folks at the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic temperature control devices. Uh, if you're not familiar with how these little beauties work, I'm not going to get into the minutia, but imagine a product that would allow you to set your pit temperature in one set. Keeps it running at that temperature all the way through the cook. Sounds too good to be true. It's not. This is real life. You can take advantage of this technology today. Maybe you're a busy working professional and you are constantly... Uh, having to work or maybe you're on the the run with the kids you don't have time to set around 10 pit temperatures i get it man barbecue guru has your back 
Uh, currently, a number of different models to choose from. Some of the most popular ones are CyberQ Wi-Fi. So if you do have a hotspot connection of some type, you are able to uh, log in through a smart device or a netbook or something like that, and you can monitor the temperature of your pit. You can also see internal temperatures of meat, so you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own bed in the middle of the night. If you're cooking too fast, you make that adjustment. It'll ramp the pit temperature down. You can see where the meat is at. It's absolutely fabulous. Or you want the easiest point of entry into automatic pit temperature control technology? How about the Party Q? I refer to it affectionately as the prostitute of automatic pit temperature control devices because it can go from one cooker to the next to the next to the next without blinking an eyelash. It is uh, fully involved all by itself. It is a single or double A battery powered. So you can put it on ceramic-style cookers. You can put it on the bullet-style cookers, even on uh, Weber kettle grills, believe it or not. And, again, it starts at 129 bucks. If you're looking for a cooker, Onyx Oven, consider it. Winning on the backyards, winning on the competition circuit for a number of years. Do yourself a favor. Head on over to thebbqguru.com and check out all of their products. If you have any questions about what to order, call them directly. Don't waste any time. 800-288-GURU. That's 800 800- 288-GURU. They will make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running, uh, up and running right out of the box. And again, that number, 800-288-GURU or, uh, or thebbqguru.com. Corey and I will be right back with McD. And we're going to be talking about beef and whatnot. Stick around. We'll be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, we are back. If you want to jump in tonight, 216-220-0966. Uh, also, email greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. My first guest of the second hour, a barbecue and grilling entrepreneur, TV personality, cooking class instructor, all-around good guy, someone I enjoy chatting with whenever he has time for the show. So let's go ahead and race over to the hotline. And welcome back, good friend of the show, Michael McDearman joining me. Michael, how are you, buddy? Hey, Greg. How are you? Michael, you there? I am. Hey, there you are. How, how are you, my friend? In a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. That, uh, that sounds pretty good, I think. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the Masters and, uh, and enjoying that show. They finally aired that one and, and uh, handling all the things off of that this week. It's been a, quite a busy time. You know, I thought I knew where I was going to start with you tonight. McD, and then I happened upon a Facebook post from Daryl Mast exclaiming oh, your Lord. freedom and so forth in quite a robust way, I might add. Um, can you begin to shed any light on that topic? Uh, were you in chains? Were you shackled in the basement of West 25th Street somewhere in Cleveland? Uh, I mean, it was just like an odd post, and uh, of course I have to ask you about this. So please, the floor is yours. Well, being a political year and elections were tonight, I I didn't make the post, and I don't know what he intended. <laughs> it's bizarre, right? How, you know that old rap song, <laughs> but it wasn't bizarre. I think uh, I think part of it is his doing now. Uh, I just announced this week that I am uh, and uh, uh, a state cook off association really. Uh, barbecue competitions. Hey, uh, Mike, um, uh, we're kind of vadering out here on the cell phone. I'm going to uh, bump you, and then I'll call you right back. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have that. That sounds really bad, I think. No. That was my impersonation of the phone call, by the way. <laughs> okay. Hopefully this uh, works out a little bit better. Uh, I have a feeling, though, it wasn't on my end. This could be like a coverage issue, probably a sprint. Sprint, if you want to sponsor the show, I'm good with that, by the way. Sorry. Uh oh. Let me turn that down. I have a feeling he's uh, in a valley and not a peak. I'm telling you, it was really an odd Facebook post. Oh boy. Are you there? 
I am. I just Get to the top of the mountain and wet your finger and stick it in the air, Michael. Let me play with the aluminum foil. There you, there you go. Watch out for the lightning. Uh, all right, so uh, let me, let's me let start with... Oh, boy, he just dropped. He go! Get that big stuff out it's, like, uh, it's like Pigman all over again, Cor. You better start tweaking the shit out of that uh, aluminum foil that you mentioned. <laughs> Or get a cell phone booster. This is the problem with cell phones. This is why, let me tell you something. You know, people always give me the what for about not going on location to do all these, you know, a show like at a a big competition or something like that. Well, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If I'm left to rely on a internet card or some type, I mean, internet card runs on a cell phone signal. Uh, For the people that don't know that, I mean, you stick it in, where do you think it's getting a, a, a connection from? Yeah, it's a cell phone. So if you don't have cell phone coverage, guess what? You don't got internet. Jack. So, well, okay, here we go. See if we let's see if we can get him back here. Michael, you there? Yeah, I'm here. How all about right. now? Yeah, I got you right now. You just dropped off like the face of the earth, but that's all right. All right, so look. Well, what's funny is I literally did come up out of the hollow, drive up a hill, and get to the top of a mountain like you said. <laughs> well, see, I mean, not many guests would go out of their way to do that, so that's what I like most about you, Michael. Not many guests would be in studio, but I feel like you're cheating on me tonight. You got somebody in the studio with yeah, you. Yeah, hey, he's, he's live, local, and late-breaking. Plus, oh, if, you're, if you're not, if you, if you ain't towing the line, he might tase you, bro. I'm not kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, In so, true Cleveland fashion. Yeah, you got <laughs> damn right. Um, so let's talk quickly about the uh, Pitmasters recap. Um, a few seasons back, for maybe the people that uh, are either new to the show or, or aren't uh, historians, you actually were on the show uh, as a counterpart to Jack Weibor, who I guess was like the you know the the lead or the front person uh, center to you. Did you apply this time like through the YouTube thing, or perhaps were you approached to come on the show directly because of what you've done in the past? They're very they're sticklers for the process, and uh, what had happened was is that uh, I had to do a YouTube video, and, and actually I think it may still be available out there on the interwebs. But um, I I did the video and went through the whole process just like anybody else would. So when you are uh, putting together this kind of video, I mean, you know, it's been through a number of seasons now. And uh, like in your mind, I mean, you're a creative guy. Uh, you got a lot of business things happening. And you're a chaser. You know, you're a worker. In your mind, what do you think that you're going to be putting together to really give you a, a good shot at trying to get on there? What things do you want to showcase when you're making a video? Um, I think you want to put your personality out there and not uh, not be disgenuine or ungenuine or ingenuine. Um, just be yourself and let it shine through. Let them know who you they've got and what they have to work with. I don't think you have to put on false airs because, frankly, when they're filming whatever it is, 16 or 20 or 24 hours worth of, of footage and then piecing a show out of it, you know, they're, they're going to have you shine through. So they need to know what they've got. And, uh, you know, they're going to put a great show together. They've done really good things for barbecue over the season. And they've tried to adapt and change to keep up with the viewership. And uh, I think they've done an excellent job. Michael McDermott joining me here on the show. Uh, A couple websites for him, getfiredupfoods.com. Also, uh, check out Steak Cookoffs, like offs, plural, steakcookoffs.com while we're uh, chatting as well. Uh, Mike, if you could kind of reset the the show scenario, uh, what you were cooking, and and kind of how things shook out for you. Holy cannoli! When you go <laughs> and you're cooking Memphis style barbecue, and they hand you pork butt and spare ribs, you're in hog heaven. <laughs> and what it is, and uh, flip it, smack it, rub it down. I think was what Mo said. Oh no! But uh, it was a fantastic show. All three contestants were Tennessee Barbecue Association members. And uh, we, I think we represented Memphis very well. You know, to hit Lear, oh, excuse me, to hear the comments from the judges, Myron Nixon screaming out, hell yeah, to my pork butt, I'll take that any day. Um, you know, you got Tuffy raving about the flavor of my ribs with the duck fat and all. That's great. But what all three of us have agreed was one of the best things that we saw when it aired was them saying it's the best food they've had on Barbecue Pitmasters. Were they and saying that really, uh, to, that really blew us away to date for that season, or like in general? 
Uh, I can't elaborate on the contract as to what was said on site, but they were implying pit pastors. All right. Well, hey, let's not be uh, uh, let's not be humble. I mean, you know, Michael McDiarmid, uh, you know, CEO of Get Fired Up Foods and captain of humbleness. But let me uh, help you out and say, of course, you deserve that. Um, uh, how much stuff, you know, I'm always fascinated by the process and the inner workings of things. So how much stuff gets left on the cutting room floor with these shows? I mean, obviously there is a drastic difference between the time you're spending out there with what we see in a 40-minute show. But was there anything left out that surprised you or was uh, do you think it was a pretty good representation of, you know, how the original time went down? Well, you know, I, I know from videos and, and uh, doing that type of thing uh, with – other entities, not in the editing room of pitmasters. Usually you want about three times the video that you need so you can edit it down and take the footage that you, you want. Uh, so they've got quite a bit on the editing room floor. And, you know, it, it was action-packed. This show was left and right, turning your head, and, and uh, they, they, got, they got what they asked for. They had some great personalities and, and uh, really genuine folks. I, I was really blessed to be going alongside those guys. You know, getting to do it as the lead person this time, uh, how does this experience compare to the time that you were on uh, with Jack a couple seasons ago? Well, what a lot of folks don't know is, well, Jack has quite a few talents, a uh, uh, journeyman butcher and, and a whole hog specialist, mm-hmm. just a, a great guy as far as his experience there, complimented me in the first season. I took that mindset and good gravy there's only one five, uh, five star, five diamond hotel in the state of Tennessee. And that's the Hermitage hotel in Nashville, right across the street from the, the Capitol and, and has one of the world-class bars called the Oak room and a fantastic, um, uh, farm that they use actually 80% of their farm, uh, food in their restaurant. Now, what I'm saying that for is, I actually had my number two, Charlotte Miller, wonderfully talented chef, want to be my backup, want to be my partner, my my teammate in this. And I couldn't have competed without her. She was fantastic. She's a small game specialist and and breaking down uh, large animals and and doing venison and and quail and all the fun stuff that you get to do in this five-star hotel like that. I mean, they even grow and bring in specialty grits. Let's put it that way. Wow. So it was a, a real special time to cook with her, and, and she's got West Tennessee roots and, and barbecue roots, too, and that was why she wanted to be on the show. Uh, they didn't showcase her much, but I wanted to definitely give her a shout-out. She was wonderful. So when you go into a show like that, you got to prepare. I mean, they'll, they'll throw everything at you. If you look at the seasons over time, I mean, everything from rattlesnake to standard barbecue, it's, it, it can be anything at any time, and, and they definitely make you – Stand on your toes. Michael McDearman, my guest, uh, getfiredupfoods.com and steakcookoffs.com. Would you do it again if uh, if they asked you uh, because you liked it that much? Or uh, would you, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump ahead. Would you do it again if they asked you to do it? Hands down. Hands down. I'm a competitive spirit, and we've been in two very close races. I mean, my tri-tip the first season was got rave reviews, and then this season, and I've just been up against some very stiff competition. I mean, first season, we lost to Robbie Royal and Rescue Smokers. Yep. And they're in it again this season. Um, and then uh, this season, we, we've we uh, come in up a little bit short. So I definitely am competitive. I want to get back in there and show them what the grill master can do. But show them that I'm a pit master as well. Is there a side benefit that you know your mug gets to be on television as well? I mean, that's got to help, right? <laughs> Does my mom get to be on television? No, your mug, not your mom. Oh, I was like, what? Okay, <laughs> you know me, a good son, always thinking of my mother. Um, no, you know there is a, a nice thing, and and I think people got to see who I really am, which is an educator and somebody who's got some knowledge that they just want to share. And I was really pleased that the show showed showcased that and shared that with the public. All right, Michael. So let's uh, switch gears just a little bit and go to obviously something that's kind of near and dear and what you're known for is steak talk. But talk to me a little bit more about this steak cook off association or uh, SCA as it uh, goes by. And I see that you have become a 
partner in that organization. Uh, what does that mean exactly? What does uh, you and uh, the SEA becoming partners mean? Uh, partner, owner, uh, sort of whatever you want to label it, but um, we have teamed up, and the State Cook-Off Association has taken a hard look how to complement existing barbecue competitions and also be a standalone on its own, whether it's going to be Bloody Mary and Margarita contests or steam cook-offs or all of the above and, and uh, you know, creating a judging technique that's going to uh, be quick, spectator and competitor friendly, absolutely integrity based. And, um, you know, trying to propel the sport a little bit more so it's more media friendly and more of an introduction to folks. So if they want to jump into steak cook-offs and those types of, top, of categories, then they can jump into the barbecue and graduate into a $4,000 smoker. Uh, but the folks that are winning barbecue, or excuse me, steak cook-offs out there, they're flying around to these contests like Brett Galloway, who's a world champion. They buy a $39 grill at the little corner market, and that's what they cook on throw some grill grates on the top and that's what they're using so it's not the fifteen thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar uh trailer and uh, winnebago hookups that you're seeing kind of dominate the competition barbecue market exactly but you can use those too if you like but the the folks who want to cook on uh you know a silver trash can with a grill grate over the top <laughs> come on you know if you've got a, a charcoal chip and a grill grate you can go compete you know, you're kind of widely known uh, within the industry as uh, the steak guy. You're on tour across the country, obviously, with Sam's Clubs doing those uh, grill demos. And, you know, you're a calculated guy, and I assume you have seen either an increase in steak competition interest or uh, perhaps you are anticipating uh, that there is going to be a, a greater spike as time goes on uh, in association with the SCA. Is the steak cook-off thing uh, a, a really big deal that you see long-term success in, or is it a, a potential fad type of a scenario? I don't lend my name to something lightly, and, and this is a long-term relationship, and this is a long-term um, event. What we're looking at, too, is don't forget the pork folks switch their names over and combine the names, so you're actually That's eating right. a porterhouse pork chop now. So it's a steak, essentially. So if you've got that kind of thing, it doesn't matter the meat. Um, grilling hot and fast and, and the techniques there uh, is just, it's a different animal than barbecue where you're doing a 10-hour brisket. It's hard to make it a spectator sport, too, at a 10-hour brisket where it's locked away so long and you're hiding in your RV or behind walls in tents. This will be nice and, and open. We want it open and friendly and, and the judging process to be a quicker process than, than uh, say, um, uh, some other sanctioning bodies out there, but you know, it'll also be accurate and it will be laced, like I said, laced with integrity, but also, um, you know, when we're missing out on things, it's capturing the people who are walking through and going, wow, okay, look at this. This is how they're doing it. And I can do this at home. And that's what our sport is going to be able to do. You're going to be right out there and be able to share with folks and interact and, and uh, folks are going to be able to see what it is, what you're doing. Now, you'll have your, your blind marks, rub secrets, and all that kind of thing. But it's going to be pretty open as far as, as cooking a steak, you know. Are, are you're there, going to be able to see the action. Are there a lot of rules associated? I, could you repeat that? Uh, pardon me. Are there a lot of rules that will be associated with taking part in a steak cook-off? You know, there, there's always got to be some ground rules to make it fair and an even playing field. But uh, what we've tried to do is simplify the process and make it uh, more refined because we don't have the politics of boards and, and uh, years of tradition. We got to get in there and, and roll up our sleeves and design it and make a better mousetrap, we think, to complement barbecue competitions. We're not, not trying to uh, do anything with barbecue competitions. We're just trying to accentuate them, help them be more profitable and retain their people and grow the sport. That's the big thing, too. Show people how that they can grill, but then they also can grow as their skills grow and move on into what they see on TV with Barbecue Pitmasters and other TV shows that are coming out. 
are there like illegal cookers? Would you be able to cook on a uh, propane grill or would you be able to bring a sous vide machine in and, and cook steak that way? The, what, what's allowed, what's not? You know, the fuels on, on uh, grilling are, are not limited. You can use propane, charcoal, wood, whatever you like. And uh, But you know what? If you can produce the flavor off of a propane grill, uh, you know, you, you're pretty dang talented. Uh, you know, charcoal produces a distinct flavor. Wood produces a distinct flavor. And that's part of the beauty of the sport is people can take what they already have in the backyard, throw it in the truck, come on down and have a great time, a family atmosphere, and, um, you know, get into some pretty exciting uh, competitions and, and really see how they measure up. How many events are there planned for this calendar year in regards to the state cookoffs? Currently, we have 13 sanctioned events. And, uh, you know, you can go to steakcookoffs.com and, and join for $35, very nominal fee. And you also get the updates and all the lists. And then also, here's the kicker, the U.S. Steak Cookoff Championships is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You win one of these bad boys, you're going in and don't have an entry fee. You come in for free. You just got to get there and cook. That's it? That's it. Wow. So uh, check that out again. So these are the this is the website you want to check out if you are, and we're getting a lot of buzz here in the chat room. Uh, steakcookoffs.com is the website. If you have found um, barbecue competitions, maybe isn't your speed, or you want to have something a little bit more uh, lightning fast, then uh, maybe steak cooking is something you want to kind of jump into because you have those competitive juices like uh, McD, like myself. Uh, steakcookoffs.com, and of course, getfiredupfoods.com. Uh, Michael, Always, always appreciate the time. When are you coming back in studio, brother? You know, I definitely want to do it. Whenever I'm up in Cleveland, I'm going to be knocking on your door. But let me say one other quick thing, if I can bump up against you a little bit against yeah. your timeline. Yep, yep. Um, you know, this could be a Friday night event at a barbecue contest or even yep. fill in that gap between the last turn-in and awards so your spectators stick around for awards. So you can have a playoff where the top teams get moved in and, and go on Saturday when they cooked on Friday night. It's the flexibility of it on how to fit your barbecue contest, too. Give us a call, and, and we'll talk, or hit us up on SteakCookoffs.com. Thank you, Greg. All right, Michael. Always appreciate the time. There he is, Michael McDearman. Corey, that guy's a pro. Do you Sound, hear him? Sounds did you, like it. Do you hear him get out like that? Use the terms bump up against it and then just signed off like a pro. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want in my guess. If you're going to go long, cut it short at the end, like just sign out. I'm out. Pull the plug. Thanks to Michael McDearman, steakcookoffs.com or getfiredupfoods.com. Uh, Stan Hayes coming up out of the break to help me close the show. Tasty Legs Barbecue Supply is known for their amazing wide selection of cookers, sauces, rubs, and all things for both the Backyard Cook and the Serious Competition team. They sell Big Green Egg, Kamado Joe, Primo, Ceramic, Mac, and Green Mountain Pellet Grills, all the Weber Grills and Smokers, as well as Meadow Creek Smokers and Cookers. They're the largest, they're perhaps one of the largest, if not the largest barbecue guru dealer in the country, and the very first to offer professional and amateur cooking classes featuring well-known chefs like Harry Sue, who will be on the show next week, uh, Todd Johns from Plow Mason from Three Eyes Barbecue, just to name a few. Uh, call Fred Bernardo, uh, I don't know, call him the smoking guitar player, or call him anything you want so long as you buy something. That's all I'm saying. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I mean, call him or his friendly staff at 800 677 2882. That's 800 677 2882, or just go over to your friendly worldwide internets and give them a peek. Tasty Licks bbq.com that's tastylicks bbq.com and don't forget smoke guitar player has over 150 cooking videos on the website and a couple of them doesn't even try to sell you anything spitting mad game and knowledge about live fire cooking on that ass tasty licks barbecue supply in beautiful downtown shillington pennsylvania tasty licks bbq.com or 800-677-2882 All right, we're back with uh, Stan Hayes right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs. 
and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back. 216-230-0966. Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. Deputy Corey in the house. Did you jazz for steak right about now or what? Oh, yeah. Would yeah. you would you rather do a steak competition or a barbecue competition? Uh, right now, I am I could do a steak, I think. Yeah, I think I could, too. I know you could. You could I, do them both. But. I don't want to do a barbecue competition. No way. Not me. All right. Uh, helping me close out the show tonight is fresh off of a win at the Overland Park Kansas Sam's Club local qualifying event. He will be moving on to the Midwest City Oklahoma Regional Final in September. Let's uh, get a recap from the pitmaster of County Line Smokers. Stan Hayes joins me here on the show. Stan, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. Appreciate you making time for the show. And uh, you know, a couple of different things I'd like to hit on uh, tonight, obviously. Um, we would love to talk about the recap of the Sam's Club. Um, but maybe if we could kind of back up a little bit as far as uh, County Line Smokers and Competition Barbecue, uh, how did you get into the whole uh, competition side of things? So, uh, you know, I got into the competition side um, through actually Jeff Stiff, uh, Big Creek Barbecue. Um, probably about seven years ago, I, I went with him and um, to a contest and uh, got about you know, stayed up most of the night, got very little sleep, and I remember driving home, trying to keep myself awake from the contest going, and that was fun. And I never thought I'd want to do it, and uh, spent several years basically, uh, um, you know, learning from him and, and uh, you know, um, helping him out before I went out on my own. So 2011 was our, the first year for County Line Smokers um, and the first year of contests. So that's sort of the quick version of how I got it, got hooked. Stan Hayes joining me here on the show, pitmaster of County Line Smokers, uh, just won the Overland Park, Kansas, Sam's Club local qualifier. Uh, Stan, if we could take a look back at the weekend itself, uh, overall, uh, and you've cooked a number of competitions, anything that comes up that's out of the ordinary or maybe something that you didn't account for that you had to contend with? Yeah. Uh, the, my ribs were, um, man, I, I pulled my ribs off at basically as the turn in started at 12, uh, 1225. They were not done. I, I left them on the pit as long as I possibly could to get, you know, um, get them in there and get them as done as possible. Um, so I thought that was going to be my Achilles heel. I really thought when I put them in the box, I had tasted one rib. I knew they looked pretty good, but I wasn't really happy with presentation. Um, evidently they must've tasted a lot better. Um, because, uh, we, we took eighth place in ribs, which just about, I just about fell over when that happened because we made it to turn in with 17 seconds left. So, Cutting it close. Yeah, uh, and and I'm one of those people I like to be in on that first half, you know, that first five minutes, not the last five minutes, and certainly not the last 17 seconds. When you are up against it like that and you are purposely leaving meat on, you know, longer than you would normally uh, make your mark to take them off, does that in turn start to set the other items that are still, because you still have pork, you still have brisket to turn in, does that kind of push their stuff back as well, or are you able to, to kind of compartmentalize and, and segment so that doesn't affect? I, I, I was able to jump ahead, you know, pull out, you know, um, my pork and check that while I was sitting there waiting. You know, normally that, you know, 10, 15 minutes uh, before the turn and I would have had the ribs out and tasting them, slicing them, saucing them, setting the sauce and doing those things. And since I didn't really have that, that time there, or, you know, I wasn't doing that. I took that time to make sure I had um, the pork and had things uh, set out. So at the minute I, you know, that box left my uh, trailer and uh, now I, this was the first contest I've ever done solo. Um, my partner, who's my wife was actually, um, down in Arkansas working with Operation Barbecue Release. So I did this with a runner, um, a friend of mine who came and ran 
boxes for me. So it was it, it, that added another layer of complexity as well, not having the person that I've kicked with for the last three years at my side. Did you find that not having you know the partner that you, you are uh, now used to cooking with, and obviously there's a, a routine that you guys have built up between you during these competitions, do you find that when uh, that person isn't there, or did you find that your uh, focus was perhaps even more laser sharp than it would be normally? Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I was I made I was trying to make sure I was ahead on everything. You know, I, I made my boxes the night before, had them all done. Um, so, and, and that, that was a painstaking, you know, process as well, because I'm not normally the one that makes the boxes. So, um, everything just, uh, I think you put it at, you know, best is, uh, I, I think I was a lot more focused because of, um, you know, having to basically do it myself. So if we look at the individual scores for the categories, 10th uh, and chicken, you get the 8th and ribs, as you had mentioned. You, know, you win pork altogether. And 4th uh, and brisket, uh, the overall score shows 683 loose change. Uh, reserve grand champion was like 669. So, you know, when we talk about scoring in competition barbecue, uh, you know, pretty good discrepancy between a grand and reserve or a sound smacking of the field in regards to the overall point spread. You know, I assume that uh, perhaps this is a cook score-wise and results-wise that you would take the majority of the time. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think overall, uh, um, even a six, you know, you look at it, uh, a 683 in many contests wouldn't even be reserve grand um, these days, it seems like, because you got a lot of a lot of contests where you're seeing 700s and the 698s and things like that. But um, overall, I mean, you know, all, having top 10 call in every category and then the, the port call basically being a, an apparent, you know, a, a taste point off of a perfect score. Um, you know, that, that's the big one that, that I, I think really, you know, made the gap, um, having that 179. You're not uh, fearful. Range. You're not fearful at all that your wife is going to be like, Oh, Hey, I can finally get out of this now. And uh, you're off on your own. You did fine just without me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Actually. Yeah. Um, and the picture on, uh, on the um, KCBS, uh, the tech, uh, I'm holding my cell phone up because my wife was actually on the phone the entire time <laughs> listening to the awards. And uh, um, so she couldn't be there, but at least she got to listen to it. And so that was my way of her being there was holding up the phone. Um, now, nah, she she missed it. Uh, you know, she yeah, it's one of those things that um, the irony of, of it, of her not being there and that was our that's our second grand champion that shit that we won. So um, luckily it wasn't our first. That might be a that might be a little harder to take. Stan Hayes joining me here on the show, pitmaster of a county line smokers, talking about the win this past weekend in uh, Overland Park, Kansas. Yeah, brain fart. Um, Stan, aside from the the competition uh, barbecue stuff, uh, you're obviously actively involved in Operation Barbecue Relief. Uh, you're the president and CEO of that organization. If you could kind of give us an update on the organization as a whole and, of course, uh, you know what you've been doing recently, which has been uh, very, A, appreciated, as I know, as I'm seeing some people in the instant chat room saying, um, but uh, needed as well. Yeah, so, so, you know, we're coming up on our third year anniversary um, here uh, the 26th of May, and... Uh, um, what, what's been accomplished in this last three years, um, I, I think uh, it's safe to say that everybody that, that's been involved with the organization never really thought we'd be at at this point. I mean, uh, last November, we surpassed a half million meals served. And, uh, you know, this, this last week, we ran three different operations in three different cities um, in two different states. And... Uh, did over 40,000 meals out of those three locations. Wow. So um, how far we've come and our volunteer base continues to grow. Um, the barbecue family you know, continues to embrace the, the organization and, and support it. Um, you know, and, and we've gotten to the point now we're starting to get more corporate um, visibility, some additional sponsorship, um, just a just purchased a brand new uh, super shot truck, which has the, the 
um, basically hot holding capability of a, and uh, the refrigeration on it, along with dry storage. It's basically a 14-foot box truck mm-hmm. um, with that on there. Um, that was uh, all done by a uh, heat-a-later fireplace. You know, we become the uh, um, the charity of choice for the Hearth Patio and Barbecue Association, the Industry Association, this last year. And so we started getting people outside of the barbecue industry now interested in what we're doing and wanting to be part of it. And I think that's the that's you know one of those watershed moments as an organization we look back on and we go, wow, that's uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, Stan, for the people that uh, either are listening for the first time tonight, or, or maybe they're not familiar with what Operation Barbecue Relief does, you know what has to happen in order for you guys to to mobilize and, and head out. So, you know, the, the first thing is is obviously there has to be a need, and and that might sound silly sometimes, but um, one of the things that we we said from the beginning is is we don't want to go into a community where a community doesn't really need us. I mean, it's always better if the community can um, feed itself, heal itself from within and not have somebody from the outside, so to speak, come in and have to do the job for them. And so um, as silly as it sounds after disaster, there are times that our services aren't needed. You know, it may have hit a residential neighborhood, but the restaurants and other businesses are open for for business and we prefer that money to stay in the community. We prefer that community to be able to help and heal itself. So once we find out that there is that need, then we have to find the location. What's a fitting location for us to be able to sit up in and be able to serve um, mass food. Um, We get to the point, you know, that there's days that um, in Mayfield, I mean, Mayflower, Arkansas, that we put, you know, we put out over 6,000 meals in a day. And for for a small town um, and community like that, that's that's a lot of meals. Um, Obviously, it's not the 25,000 that we did in a day in more Oklahoma, but it's all it's all scalable. What we've tried, we continue to try to build, I should say, is something that we're looking to be able to replicate and scale. So it can be done in multiple locations um, with different people at the helm, so to speak. Stan Hayes joining us here on the show, pitmaster of uh, County Line Smokers, also president and CEO of Operation Barbecue Relief. Uh, Stan, where can people go uh, to, A, find out more about uh, the foundation itself and if they want to sign up and and perhaps become a volunteer and help out? So if they go to OperationBBQRelief.org, uh, they, there's basically uh, two avenues in there. When you get in there, you can you can register as a volunteer. Um, this w- this is a new site that's up. Um, you'll you'll see it's uh, totally redesigned, and we actually launched it prematurely. We were at, um, we've come up with a new uh, volunteer um, interface, so to speak. So when you go in and you register as a volunteer, you basically are creating a profile. And so after disaster strikes and we know we're going to go someplace, then we put a deployment on there and people can then go back in, um, log into their account, you know, into their profile and look at what days are available and, and what's needed and be able to put their name in that, into that position and say, yes, I can be there Friday, Saturday, or I can be there Tuesday, Wednesday. And, you know, that's putting them in. Um, so we know, Hey, yep, I'm committing to be there those days rather than us trying to call through a list and email people and find out who all wants to be there, they're, they're telling us. So, so we, um, instead of testing that in a mock environment, we uh, jumped right into it and, and used it um, for these three deployments that we had. Um, the other way is, is that obviously there's a donate button and, and we're pushing more and more. I mean, look, yeah, we love, love donations at the time, but what we'd like to do is we'd like to see more people, you know, doing, you know, small donations throughout the year rather than trying to come up with a larger donation just at one time. And so we have the opportunity for recurring donations at this point on the website. Um, So there's multiple ways uh, to be able to help out. Stan Hayes and uh, County Line Smokers just won the Overland Park, Kansas, Sam's local qualifier. 
and we'll move on to the regional round of Midwest City, Oklahoma, this coming September. Also, President and CEO of Operation Barbecue Relief. Stan, thanks so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Yep, you got it. There he is. Stan Hayes, Operation Barbecue Relief. Corey, I don't want to uh, show my ass here, but I have more reads than I have time. I, I realize what I did, of course, but let's just say somebody just got a read. Uh, somebody got a read on me, if you know what I mean. All right, folks, uh, let me talk to you quickly about Butcher's Barbecue. That's right. When you're looking to step that barbecue and grilling game up the extra notch, you go to ButcherBBQ.com and you check out what he's most known for. The injections, the pork, the beef, the prime injection, of course, Bird Booster, which you can put in your poultry, adds layers of succulents and moisture. Three times more. If you brine, you get 7% extra moisture. If you do Bird Booster, you get uh, 21% uh, moisture. I mean, that's three times the difference. That's significant. Why aren't you doing that? I don't know. You go to ButcherBBQ.com, you order yourself some, and then you don't have to have me lecture you during the show. Now look, we all know that Butchers is well known for the injections, but they have the go-to rubs and sauces as well. Of course, everybody knows I love the honey rub, which I have uh, probably maybe two pounds of a five-pound bag that I got a couple weeks ago. Uh, And you know I love the sweet barbecue sauce because it pretty much wins in every category for me. Uh, No liquid smoke, it's got some heat, it's got some sweet... And again, you know, I'm obviously in the minority on the whole liquid smoke thing because if you open up 50 bottles at the grocery store, most of them have the liquid smoke crap in it, which is why I don't buy them in the grocery store, and I like to make my own. But if I can't make my own, I reach for Dave's sauce each and every time. You should buy six because they're going to go fast, and you don't have to worry about breaking the bank on shipping. Anything at 55 bucks or less ships at $8.55. Between 55 and 200 ships at $9.75. And anything over $200 ships for free. So I always say each and every week, spend the $201 and save on the shipping for crying out loud. You can easily find stuff there that will get you over that total without blinking an eyelash because it's all great stuff and you're going to want to try it. You're going to reorder and it's going to be great. Also, if for whatever reason... You have bought a commercially made injection that is not Dave's, that is not a Butcher Barbecue product, and it sucks, or you hate it, or your scores have tumbled, or your wife wants to punch your throat because it's not the same that she's used to. Pack it up. Go to Dave's link, ButcherBBQ.com. Go to the trade-in link, print off the slip, and send that commercial injection back to Dave. He will weigh it and send you back his product instead, making his customers happy making his competition's customers happy. Dave Bosca, genius. Thank you. Uh, ButcherBBQ.com is the website. Again, that's ButcherBBQ.com. Butcher Barbecue, always trust your butcher. All right, we're back to wrap the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Big B, New South Bend, Suburban West Let's go! I'm an outlaw. All right, we are back. Uh, 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com if you want to jump in here in the last couple minutes. Of course, successful second time in as a co-host. For instance, uh, Bill from Florida. Corey is the... Oh, shit. Corey is the best second man since Ed McMahon. (laughs) He needs to say, you are correct, sir, once in a while. (laughs) That's what I feel like, yes. (laughs) You are correct, sir. Yes. I mean, that was either the worst gig or the best gig ever, being Johnny Carson's sidekick. Because from what I understand, he was like mega douche. Johnny Carson, that is. Not Ed McMahon, who also saw fame as the host of Star Search, if you were to recall. Remember Star Search? 
Vaguely. My favorite one was the spokes model category. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hurry, get to the swimsuit part of the 30-second vignette. That's my favorite part. You're beautiful, darling. Let's get your scores, and then I'll take you to the back room. <laughs> All right. Um, good stuff for Operation Barbecue Relief. Obviously, uh, if you're looking to help that out, uh, OperationBBQRelief.org is the website. And as he had mentioned, there's a donate button there at the top. Um, also, uh, we are doing the, the fundraiser thing tonight for juvenile diabetes or type 1 diabetes, uh, which is not type 2, which is... Uh, I guess what some people are confusing with uh, barbecuers because they're big and fat. Way different, not the same. Um, you can help out by going to uh, J- oh, jdrf.org. I was saying it wrong earlier during the interview. Uh, you can contribute there, or you can do it uh, during our little fundraiser tonight, which is my PayPal address for the show, Greg1G, G-R-E-G, at the BBQ Central Show.com, affectionately known as the email address of the show. And if you have PayPal, you can uh, quickly done there, and or you quickly donate there, and then uh, we'll give it to the end of the week, and then we'll make our donation as uh, Barbecue Central to uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. It'll be great, and then uh, hopefully we can push them over their goal of five thousand dollars. I believe in talking with my cousin uh, earlier in the week, they were like right around thirty five hundred bucks. So, you know, last time we pushed them over the top. So I'm hoping this time we can do it. Odds. On getting over the top, Corey. Yes or no? Yes. You are correct, sir. <laughs> I'm your Ed McMahon. What the hell is going on here? Son of a bitch. I forgot. All right. Um, don't forget, coming up on the show next week, Meathead is in. Harry Sue is in as well. And you never know uh, what else is going to shake out. There's going to be a local Sam's Club event, so we'll probably have the winner on there as well. All right. Let's hurry up and uh, ski daddle. Uh, all the way back in the first hour, we talked with Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, for his monthly Ask Dr. Barbecue segment. We also talked with Scott Volpe about uh, juvenile diabetes and type 1 diabetes. And then in the second hour, we talked with Michael McDiarmid about steak at firedupfoods.com and steakcookoffs.com. And then we ended the show with Stan Hayes from County Line Smokers talking about his win at the Sam's Club events and also a little bit about Operation Barbecue Relief. Uh... Thank you so much, Corey, for hanging out with me tonight. We'll do it again soon. You got it. All right. Until uh, next Tuesday, let me remind you of two things. If you got the raw cast iron season each and every time, also September 11th, 2001, I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's your program host and proud U.S. American Greg Rempe for Corey Spigerko. Good night now.